Hey everybody, how's it going? So I'm gonna try to post more videos right now since we're all, you know, supposed to not really go anywhere and everyone's pretty much just staying at home. So I figured why not make more stuff? So today I am gonna show you how to make a soccer goal. Uh, my daughter was supposed to play soccer this year for the first time, but with everything getting canceled, that obviously got canceled. She was a little bummed. So we're gonna make a soccer goal so the family can play in the yard. So if you want to see how to do it, stick around. Okay, the first step we're doing here is going to run everything through the planer and the table saw to square it off. This isn't a necessary step. I just like it like this. I'm kind of going for a look at the end where it's out of steel tubing. So squaring off all this gives it that look. And we are going to use a total of five eight foot two by fours here and here all they are after they're playing the first thing you're going to do is measure the height a little bit taller than you because chances are you will be the goalie for your kids so if you're the goalie you don't want to be hitting your head so now i'm cutting those to length and then i take the next two by four and cut it perfectly in half for the back of on the posts the other two two by fours i'm going to go back to the table saw and rip them in half for the back, top, and sides. And we're gonna join these with pocket holes. So as you can tell, I'm really proud of that little clip I put together a few videos ago. So anytime I use pocket holes, I'm probably gonna use those. So the bottom of these get three uh, pocket holes a piece, and we're gonna use the two and a half inch long screws the main thing is to make this flush on the back and then drive your screws all the way in you can use glue if you need to but I did not and then the top one I just put it all the way across and I just left it full length no point in cutting it and I took two screws and drove them all the way in trying to make sure all the sides are flush I do come back later and put some metal angle brackets in the inside and outside to sturdy this up. I just didn't show that on camera. Now we gotta measure and cut the piece for the back on the bottom. And since we used a full two by four on the top and these were three and a quarter inches wide, I took six and a half inches off and stuck it in between the two with two pocket holes in each. So here's me after a few minutes of trying to contemplate a compound miter. And then after a while I just decided Let's just clamp it and draw a line and just do regular regular uh, cuts because the compound would have looked cooler but that was getting a little complicated and my brain was starting to hurt so i just go to my lines cut them this one was a little too steep for the table saw so i used my circular saw to do it and i attach it on there with a couple brads first just so that it doesn't move because it will slide around on you and then come back with screws in the top and the bottom to secure it this project, you know, we're just throwing it together real quick. You could do this out of PVC instead and get the couplings, but I keep a lot of two by four, so I figured I'd just do it like this so I wouldn't have to buy other stuff. Uh, but I am gonna paint it, and if you guess, I think I'm gonna paint it red. I think we're gonna paint the front and the front and the cross red, and then the rest, we might do it in black. So we're gonna paint it real quick. So now that the frame is done and painted, we need to attach the net. So I start by marking out lines every four inches and then come back and pre-drill so that we can attach these eye hooks. I start on one end and go ahead and tie this clothesline string, feed it down, pull it all the way, go over to the next eye hook and then back up and then zigzag through the whole thing and then tie that off on the very end. So now that the back's done, I'm going to go on the sides, and on the red part, I'm going to do 12 eye hooks 6 inches apart, and then on the black part on the bottom is going to have 12 on 4 inches apart. And then get the string all untangled, that's kind of the pain. Start tight on one, and zigzag it back and forth. The excess string, we're going to go ahead and start wrapping it around the back part. 
So we're going to not just basket weave it around, but also wrap it around the string so it stays in place. After doing a bunch of this so far, obviously, it really doesn't matter about how tight you do it at first. The main thing is you just need to wrap them. It doesn't really matter in the order, so I go over. Sometimes I go back like this. I mean, now that you got it all the way through, this doesn't look good, but now I'll show you how you fix that. The main thing is just getting it all the way through first. So we're gonna go over here on this side. The first thing we're gonna do is get the end of the rope, feed it through here. And the way I like to do this is hold the end that's going in. That way you make sure it's not gonna get tangled and then pull it through. Like anything else, it takes a while to kind of figure out your method that works the best, but that's how things go. So pull that through. Now, now that we got it all the way through, now we need to put tighten it. So we can start from here. We pull this, pull that. Pull that one. And you basically just take all the slack out and try your best to evenly space it as you go. Okay, now that you got it back over here, what I like to do is I'm going to now tie this. I'm going to pull it through this. And you're kind of tying it up, but not So I figured out a way, after I only have like four left to do, to leave the string like this. Um, preferably, I guess, maybe you would want to use hooks. That way you can hook it instead of looping it. But I didn't want it coming off. That's why I used the eye hooks. So a way that I just figured out to keep it this way, though. So press the rope. You need some slack, though. So press the rope through here. Pull it. And then feed the rope through the loop and then tighten it down and now you're ready for your next strand after all that weaving of the net which i'm kind of glad i did it anyways because i think it's cooler that the net was made rather than bought but it is done so there it is there's uh the strings on the bottom i'm gonna cut those off and burn them and then it's ready to go outside Uh, since it's been raining, my shoes are soaked, but let's still see if I can make any. So let me set the camera up. Okay, here we go. Long range. Hopefully I don't, hopefully I don't fall. Ah. Take numero dos before it starts raining. Oh, okay. I'm gonna try to make it from long range before it starts raining again. So let's see what happens. Okay, let me see if I can make it from long range because it's getting cloudy and it's about to start raining again. Are you for real? Okay, it's sprinkling. So I didn't intend this, but I kind of like it. With the net being as tight as it is, when you kick it, it shoots back at you. It's none of that going in there and trying to fish it out. So, especially if you're by yourself, you know, you can just sit here and you can keep kicking. It goes back and forth. So, I kind of like that. Something else it does, not only is it just for kicking, it's also a training aid for your throw-ins. So, you throw it on the back, it bounces back to you. So, you work on your, your throw-ins. So, guys, I hope you like this video. It's starting to sprinkle, so my shoes are already soaking wet. So if you like this video, click that thumbs up button. Also, think about subscribing to my channel if you haven't already. 
and I'll see y'all at the next one. Now I gotta go get that. See ya.